<laughs> there were once three really big-headed doctors who lived in a small town and who were utterly convinced that they were the best and cleverest doctors in the whole world. And that was the trouble, you see. Everybody for miles around had heard the three doctors boasting. There simply weren't enough people left to boast too about how wonderful they were. So one day, they decided to travel around the world to find fresh people to show off to. Well, for several months, they travelled across the country, telling everyone they met how clever they were, until one evening, they arrived at an inn. The innkeeper and his wife were busy doing the sort of thing that innkeepers and their wives are best at doing. And when the three doctors arrived, they walked straight in with their chests puffed out, knocked the innkeeper's wife out of the way and kicked the cat! Uh, your best food and your best beer, they exclaimed, and make sure you serve it on your best silver plates, for the best doctors in the world have just arrived. Blimey, you three gentlemen think pretty highly of yourselves, don't you? said the landlord. Yes, we do, you horrid, fat, smelly peasant. That's because we're infinitely more clever, talented and attractive than anyone else in the universe, aren't we, guys? Yeah, we are, so there. Now get us some food, hamster brain. All right, then, said the innkeeper. No, wait a minute, wait, 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 just, just one minute. If you think you're so great, let's see what you can do. So, the three doctors put their heads together and had a quick chat. And he goes, well, I got the tomato, I got the tomato, I got the tomato, I got the tomato, And they came up with three quite disgusting ideas. You want to know how clever I am? asked the first doctor. Yeah, well, this is what I'll do. I'll cut off my own hand right in front of you now. Yeah, and in the morning I'll stick it back on again. <gasps> you think that's clever? exclaimed the second doctor. Single hand? Blimey. I'll do something much more clever than that. I'll cut out my own heart and stick that back in in the morning. Yeah, that's what I'll do. A hand? <laughs> A heart? <laughs> sneered the third doctor. I used to do that when I was a teenager. I'll take out my eyes. Yeah, both of my eyes, and I'll put them back in in the morning. Crikey, well, if you can do that, the innkeeper said, I'll give you your bed and your breakfast for nothing. Now, what the innkeeper didn't know is that the three boastful doctors had a special ointment. Yeah, this was, a, this was a magic ointment, which had been given to them by a grateful witch after they'd managed to get rid of her warts. She had 200 warts on her nose. But that wasn't the problem. Her nose was growing out of her chin. That was the problem. It was a simple operation. They just cut off her head. No, 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 but that's another story. Anyway, the point is, this ointment would stick them back together again, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. So they didn't care what they did and quickly agreed to the innkeeper's challenge. The first doctor hunted around in his overstuffed tool bag, brought out a knife and going, da, 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 cut off his hand. Oh, look everybody, look what I just did. <laughs> the second doctor, meanwhile, opened up his chest of goodies, found the right compartment and cut out his heart. The third doctor, without any further ado, pulled out a teaspoon and... plucked out his eyes. Ugh. Well, after this utterly disgusting performance, the three doctors all went to bed. The innkeeper put the hand, the heart and the eyes on a plate, put the plate away in the fridge and turned in himself. But unfortunately, his wife forgot to close the fridge door. And that night, their pet cat got in took one look at the plate and with a great meow at the lot. Nobody found out about this until the next morning when the innkeeper and his wife went to open the fridge. They uh, opened it, they looked inside. <gasps> An empty plate. They looked again. Oh dear, oh dear, the wife moaned. What am I to do? The hand and the art and the eyes are all gone into the cat and the cat's gone off too. Well, we'll just have to replace them, the innkeeper said. We'll just have to find another hand, another art and two more eyes before they wake up. But where will we find them, the wife wailed. Look, just calm down, my love, the innkeeper replied. Let's take this one at a time. Right, the, the hand. How about a second hand shop? The art? We could go to an art gallery. And the eyes in the box. What box? The eyes box in the fridge. Oh, that's a good idea. It's, no, it's not. Just shut up. Well, give me a moment to think. 
I know. And in the end, they got the hand from a convicted criminal who had been hanged on the local gallows. Then they went down to the larder and took out a pig's heart that they had been saving for soup. Ugh. And finally, they caught the cat that had caused all the trouble and took out its eyes. <laughs> now, simmer down. I'm just going to take out your eyes. <laughs> Come on, it's only a story. <laughs> and, uh, and took out its eyes. <laughs> so, when the three doctors woke up and came downstairs, there was a hand, a heart and two eyes, just like the ones they'd left. All right, they said, stand back, stand back, all you stupid, ordinary people, and watch out you don't die of amazement, because you're about to see some totally, amazingly, incredibly, fantastically spectacular doxering. <laughs> and out came the ointment, and they smeared it all over them, just like a tube of glue. So, the first doctor stuck on the thief's hand. The second doctor opened himself up and squashed the pig's heart into his chest. And the third doctor, well, he felt around for a bit, found the cat's eyes and, assuming they were his own, popped them into his head. And the innkeeper and his wife clapped loudly. <laughs> Not only because they'd never seen surgery performed as skillfully as this, but also, of course, because they hadn't been caught out. You win the bet, he said. <laughs> You're certainly as clever as you said you were. Cleverer, in fact. <laughs> so you can have your bed and breakfast for nothing. And let's hope we never see you again, the wife whispered under her breath. Then everybody bowed at each other and said their goodbyes, and off the three doctors went. But it soon became very clear that something had gone horribly wrong. They'd only been walking for about five minutes and had been talking about how clever they were, you know, which was their favourite subject of conversation, as we know, when they came upon a huge muddy puddle in the road. Well, two of the doctors tried to step round it without getting their shoes dirty, but the other doctor, the one with the pig's heart, leapt in the air, landed on his bottom, slap bang in the middle of the puddle, and proceeded to roll about on his back with his legs in the air. <laughs> what are you doing? The other doctors exclaimed. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> the doctor replied. What did he say? I think he said... <laughs> what did he say that for? I don't know. What did he say that for? <laughs> what did he say? He said... <laughs> What did he say that for? I don't know. What did he say that for? <coughs> he said, <coughs> what did he say that for? I don't know. What did he say that for? <coughs> he said, <coughs> what did he say that <coughs> for? I don't know. He's... And they went on like this for 20 minutes until the other two got fed up and dragged him out of the puddle and continued on their way. But they hadn't been going another five minutes when the second doctor, the one with the cat's eyes, stopped dead. His hair stood on end and out came his tongue, licking his lips. <coughs> Look at that mouse on that hill 20 miles away, he exclaimed. Have you ever seen such a plump little mouse? Meow! What did he say? He said meow. What did he say that for? I don't know. What did you say that for? Meow! What did he say? He said meow. What did he say that for? He said, oh, don't start that again. <laughs> and you shut up. And it was only by saying, hey, let's all go that way and buy some cream at the first shop, that they managed to continue on their journey. Another five minutes passed. And this time, the three doctors happened to meet a rich merchant who was travelling the other way. Just as he passed by, nodding politely as travellers in those days did, the third doctor's hand shot out and disappeared into the merchant's baggy and richly patterned coat. It seemed to have a life of its own. And when it reappeared a few moments later, it was holding ten golden coins. The merchant hadn't felt a thing. It had been a perfect piece of pickpocketing. But the other two doctors had seen everything. My dear friend, they exclaimed, what has got into you? Don't you know it's wrong to steal? Uh, steal what? The third doctor asked, as his hand slipped the coins neatly up his sleeve. Well, with the one doctor throwing himself into every puddle, another trying to eat mice, and the third robbing everyone he met, it didn't take them much time to work out they'd been made to look like utter fools. Uh, I, I, I think we'd better go home as quickly as possible, they said, their faces as red as a monkey's bum. Eventually, they arrived back in their hometown, very, very embarrassed. So much so that none of them ever operated again. And they never boasted again either. But the funny thing is that they found they were actually much happier than they had been to start with. And that must be the moral of the story. For although the first doctor still enjoyed an occasional role in a really wet, muddy puddle, and although the second doctor was occasionally spotted chasing mice, and although it was well known that the third doctor had a tendency to steal other people's silver, on the whole, everybody thought their travels had greatly improved them, and they spent the rest of their days being liked, not for being clever, but just for being themselves.